adrift. Above the Inuit settlement, the waxing moon cast little light over the already glittery snow. The cinematic sky featured the aurora borealis as it cartwheeled and spiralled as far as the eye could see, entertaining watchers like trapeze performers at a circus. Far below, inside a hut, worry filled an Inuit's mother's heart. Her daughter's cough worsened each day. She recalled her husband's heartbreaking words as he left the house to join the hunting group. Too little, too late. Our daughter carries the same amount of toxicity of an industrial worker. We all do. And for us, there'll be no cure. The mother stroked her daughter's silky smooth coal black hair as the infant snuggled deeper under the fur pile. The mother recited an ancient tale of the dancing bears who performed in the sky. The great bear kept sentry over the younger, lesser, naughty bears. Her daughter giggled and smiled. For now, they sat in the calm eye of the storm, with nature's real fury about to be unleashed after thousands of years of survival in the harsh and forbidding landscape of the tundra. Over recent months, the visiting doctor shared alarming health statistics, a stark warning, and the listening audience shifted uncomfortably in the community hut. The more pollution we face, the more our natural foodstuffs become contaminated. It impacts the whole food chain. It's a known fact seal meat carries flame retardant toxins and other detriments. They're dying off and so are we. Listening to voices raised in anger and lowered in resignation, deep down the father understood the desperation the polar bears faced in their search for food as their habitats changed. Bears travelled nearer to the Inuit communities, posing an increasing threat to human life. They didn't want to eat human flesh, but humans overran the natural world and polluted, contaminated and destroyed every natural resource they touched. In the same manner, King Midas turned everything irretrievably into gold. The only time the hunter had seen a malnourished bear struggling, he left a baby seal, destined to die anyway nearby, a rare act of compassion that led him to wonder whether they, as a family, should move away and start afresh. This night, the hunter sought adult bears, their creamy pelts bringing in thousands of dollars. In the opposite direction from the hunter's resting place, a polar bear mother snuggled up against her drowsy cub in her hollowed out den. Watching his paws need her fur, motherly pride filled her heart. With the odds stacked against them, she sighed. With so little energy to face the raging storms around and above her, she'd have to leave soon. Seals would have to surface too a waiting game with only one winner. The polar bear mother watched the fascinating display of lights. Sometimes she told her cub stories her own mother shared about how magical bears tumbled around playfully, colouring the sky with their antics. Not the time to reminisce, the wind had abated, time to go. She nuzzled her sleeping baby and pulled herself out of her sanctuary. With a perilous trek ahead, she had to arrive at first light. With no trees or other barriers, the wind hurtled across the land as ice particles stung and pockmarked the exposed skin of the hunters' faces. Now split into two groups, they stayed in sight of each other, the tents billowing, rifles in hand, as the vast wilderness of fjords and glaciers bore the brunt of the storm. The whining of the dogs intermingled with nature's howls, the hunter shivered with the unearthly ethereal sound. He knew the weight to lessen winds reduced the dispersion of their scent. And the Inuit dogs, the successors of the canvas loopers, would be able to use their canid abilities to sense the presence of bears. Soon the wan morning sun appeared briefly, and the crisp ice crunched underfoot. At an intersection of the paths they knew, drifting snow covered the routes in each direction. The group halted. Ahead lay an area of indeterminate land and water. Here seals hesitated and only came up for air out of necessity 
and polar bears blended into the overall white wilderness, their invisibility increasing their chances of escape and attacks. Alertness and the dogs, as natural enemies of the bears, kept the group alive here. The elder hunter looked thoughtful. There'll be a blizzard soon. We should get across the thin ice to the other side as quickly as possible. Dog sledges proceeded carefully, the hunters staying at least an arm's length away from each other. The last hunter of the group thought of his wife and child at home and coughed, his chest unusually tightened with the effort. Ahead, the ice shelf loomed, watching them menacingly. With no other choice, today had to bring results. The blizzard started quickly, and the men held onto rope to hold themselves together. Each step into the wind seemed to push them back, and it felt wiser to stay put to avoid the disorientation such conditions could bring. Moving onwards would be foolhardy, and knowingly, the dog stood still, waiting for the flurries to pass. The hunter coughed violently, wavering on the spot. He faltered for a few moments, but stayed upright. He heard a howl strangled by the wind, and thought he could see the vague silhouette of another hunter. He tried to focus on the shape ahead. Was it to the left now? Another cough racked his body. The wind whipped the rope from his hand as he struggled to stay upright. Immediately, instinctively, he tried to grab it, but the ground around him erupted, spewing knife-edged ice chunks into his face as a seal crashed through the ice. An iron grip around his leg startled him and he kicked hard with his other spiked boot. The seal only tightened its grip. Pain racked, he fell onto the snow, kicking hard with his free leg, feeling an impact and hoping to hurt or shock the seal enough for it to withdraw. But no, this became a fight for survival, the hunted becoming the hunter. No one could hear the hunter's screams in the dense whiteout. The ice moved beneath him. An image of his daughter filled his vision momentarily, and with a last burst of energy and the final thrust of his leg, the seal let go. The hunter, breathless now, crawled in his stomach in the opposite direction, sensing the seal had not yet finished its attack. Feeling around, the rifle was no longer draped across his shoulder. Polar bears instinctively smelled prey blood and he wailed in desperation. Another sudden drop and he felt the crack of breaking bones. He hit soft snow face down and a hollow thunderous cracking sound reverberated around him, releasing his face so he could take in sharp, ragged, desperate breaths. Snow on the move now. Horizontal or upright, he didn't know, as the rushing snow carried him in a flow he couldn't halt. Freezing cold water hit his left hand side, where his damaged leg hit the water. Danger felt too close. The seal would return and claim a hollow victory. Blindly reaching out, he scrambled the only way upwards and lay down on what seemed to be packed ice, at least stable and flat. He closed his eyes. I awoke and felt a sensation of bobbing. On a boat, I'd been rescued. The cold air turned my breath into ice and I tried to cry out, but the dryness of my throat relieved me of speech. No words came forth. I slowly moved a frozen hand and carefully felt the tiny cuts all over my face, as numerous as the stars I imagined shining down on me, but my stiffened eyelids allowed little sight. Instead, I felt ice, and realised a separation from my party sealed my fate. I bobbed for a few minutes until I summoned enough energy to touch my leg, a gaping wound sealed with an ice cap of its own. My thoughts turned to home. Instantly, I dismissed memories of my wife and daughter as my chest constricted with the pain of my and their loss. I rubbed my eyes and tried to open them. Relieved to see the aurora, I wanted to cry. A solar flare heightened the purple as it formed a scarf around the green neck of light. I could hear something approaching, swimming. Not a boat, though. Then a growl. Myself, the stars, the dancing of the aurora, and now a polar bear in close proximity. The ice lurched precariously, and I had company at the opposite end of the iceberg. I could smell the bear turning slightly from what I could make out, an adult female sniffed the air and emitted a deep, 
throated, pulsing sound. Polar bear was scared, afraid, and she faced her only enemy, me as a human. The gravity of the situation hung between us like a slow motion bullet working towards its final destination. She briefly reared onto her hind legs, and instead of attacking me, she turned away and lay down, exhausted from her own ordeal. As the Earth moves on its axis, different constellations paid their final respects. The dancing lights overhead fade as my lifeblood drains into the crystallised shroud of my deathbed. I wonder, in a brief moment of lucidity, whether I'll become her next meal in retribution.